Welcome to an all new episode of the Lisa Ann Experience. I am your host, Lisa Ann, and I would like to thank you for making me a part of your listening pleasure. If you're new to this podcast, you can go back, subscribe, listen to previous episodes, or you can easily watch all of the video components to all of these episodes on my YouTube channel, The Real Lisa Ann. Note, all social media is The Real Lisa Ann, and there are a lot of imposters out there, and I just like to make that very clear and talk about it a lot to remind everybody I don't have a private account, though there's tons of them on Instagram. So don't fall for it. And I appreciate you being here. I've got a great episode for you today. If you've been listening, if you are one of my friends in my community that I get to sit and chat with on Friday nights at 8 p.m. for the live premiere of my episode each week, you know that I put myself on a little spending freeze. We are now into the first full week of February, and I have still not bought one non-necessity in 2023. It feels so good. I mapped this out before the end of the year. I did a lot of shopping for events. I was hitting this, you know, you go to a store, you see something, you think about it. If you don't go, you don't even know what you're missing, but once you start, it's kind of that thing. And so I told myself for 30 days, I'd go on a spending freeze. And then I've realized, okay, well, everything's mapped out and I've been busy. I've been traveling. I have everything I need. And now it's like, it's, it's kind of a challenge. Like, let's just see how long I can go. I've been avoiding the emails from Saks, Nordstrom, Nordstrom Rack, all of the stores, delete, delete, delete the texts, all of it. Just been ignoring it. It feels, it's very empowering. And it's also just cool to see a credit card statement come in with something, but like my groceries, maybe some dry clean, like a couple of little things here and there makes a huge difference. So I'm already into February. I'm going for it. Let's see how long this can last. Staying busy truly helps. And that's what I've been doing. So another funny thing about it being just the first full week in February is I've already taken four trips super comfortable and used to my way around airports, who has bathrooms at baggage, who doesn't have bathrooms at baggage, like starting to get there. And I've been flying a bit more out of LaGuardia. And I have to say that redesign of that airport, I always fly American, so American JetBlue, that airport is beautiful. Uh, It's just amazing. So a little bit of balance there. My first trip this year was Vegas. I did a recap about the gravy train as an episode. If you haven't heard it, that's one you want to go back and listen to. My second trip, Denver, Colorado, skied Keystone with my friend Austin. Also, I'd like to give a little shout out to Hannah. Hannah is uh, Austin's stepsister who is in a book club of two people and their February book is one of mine, which would either be The Life or The Life Back. Both available at my store, shoplisaann.com. But yeah, so shout out, Hannah. I appreciate your kind words. I would have sent you the book. Thank you so much for supporting me. I can't wait to meet you. I feel like I'm part of the family already, and I'm working on getting even closer into that family. Third trip, Jamaica. I went to Jamaica with the TMA STL crew. That's my show that I do for Fantasy Football Fridays in St. Louis. It's also a spot that I go to every May for the dotum. We have the dates, but I don't know if I'm allowed to release them, but they're already in my calendar. So I'm going to hold off, but it is happening. And I will be there for both days. The charity for that event is uh, birdies for bipolar, a great charity foundation set up by uh, Michael Wellington, who is also going to be present, uh, professional golfer, golf caddy as well now, and gives lessons, which I should be taking. Jamaica was amazing. Now, there's things people don't tell you uh, when you're going to different places. Like it's two to two and a half hours in a bus to get from the airport to the resorts in Jamaica. Didn't know that. Why didn't they build the resorts closer? I guess the beach is nicer over there. I don't know. Didn't know. It wasn't torture, but it's something that's like, they're like, oh, are you ready to go? Okay. Do you have to go to the bathroom? It's going to be two hours. Like two hours? Where are we going? Um, But the resort was great. It was a radio event. I got to be live on air day one. I will say the Twitter chaos that ensued because people tag 
they respond to my posts, which then responds to the tags because people don't know how to click the dots and say, untag these people. So what happens on Twitter and more than ever is whenever I'm trying to collab or do something else, uh, people just decide that it's a great time to just send me porn of myself. I know that's kind of a side set back, right? Like annoying because then people have to come to me and say, hey, this doesn't align with what we're doing. You have to take down these posts, which ah, adds a little annoying extra work to me. I do have a strict policy I'm follow following. Um, dick pics, you're blocked. You send me porn, you're blocked. I don't need to see it. I was there. I know it's there, but it's just the fact that it's become this funnel of everybody sharing content. You know, yesterday I saw on Instagram that quite a few performers in the industry were recently suspended. And most likely it's because of content, right? But what about all of the other people that are sharing? I guess because they have the most followers and they're easy to find, but you can just put porn into the browser and you can find everything you want. I, I think it's too bad that they're losing accounts that they're using for business instead of potentially saying we could have an age gate or there could be some other policy. When there's so many people including the people that feel they need to send it to me all day, every day. So that did happen in Jamaica. So there was that. But other than that, the trip was fantastic. The organization of this beautiful dinner for us on, this, on the first night after radio, overlooking the ocean, set this beautiful round table, square table, but like in a box. And of course it was the night of, it was Sunday. We had to watch football, you know, it was the night before our first radio. So we had them bring a television up and so we could watch the game. And it was a big game. This is going to lead to the Super Bowl. We're sports radio. Uh, but it was a beautiful, beautiful dinner. The view, just everybody. And, you know, the weather in Jamaica in the winter is fantastic because it's still warm, but it's not hot. And I can imagine in the summer, it's got to be so hot there. My hair would frizz so much. So back from Jamaica, I was back from Jamaica for two days. So the goal is always to be home Wednesdays to do my show on the Better Sports Network. I could do it remotely from anywhere because all I need is Wi-Fi, but to get a better connection, I like to hardwire into my router. I also like to have all of my stuff set up, multiple computers. I put a smaller one in front of me so I can be searching live scoring in the NBA that night for Ricky's props. And so Wednesdays I'm home. So I got home on Tuesday from Jamaica, did my show on Wednesday after my show packed up for the airport, went back to the airport Thursday morning, Jamaica, baby, after Jamaica, I'm sorry, Nashville, it's starting to blur together. I mean, I got my miles on my mind and my miles on my mind. I mean, that's all I got on my mind right now, my airline miles. So I went to Nashville. Nashville was a trip put together with Kay, shout out to Kay, follow at just letter K. Um, shout out to Kay for setting up a studio in Nashville with an engineer and a friend that, that Kay collabs with a lot, Seeger Phoenix studios, the perfect setting for me to record the audiobook. Because if you recall, I recorded my first audiobook solo in my bedroom closet during the pandemic. I made a list of things that I wanted to accomplish that I procrastinated and said, you've been handed time. You better do these things. But I had no one in my ear. So if things were clipping or if something wasn't as clear, the sound isn't as perfect because it's not the same every day. You're not working with an engineer who's in your ear that can say, let's redo this or can tell you, play for you the sound from the day before to make sure it's perfect with that sound. So didn't want to do crazy long days. Four hours is about the time where you've been staring at a device. So I downloaded my book, The Life Back, onto my iPad. So you're staring at a device in a small room, and really all you're hearing is your own thoughts, right? Do you like how you pronounce this word? Was it clear enough? Did you end that sentence on the note that you wanted to? You're narrating a story. So we got through most of it in three days, had the studio for four had one more chapter to do on the fourth day, and then the proper like entering cl credits, closing credits, all the like nuts and bolts details to bond it all together. So that was only a couple of hours in studio yesterday, which was Sunday. But my end is complete. It's such a feeling of satisfaction. But at the same time, I have to be real and say that when I complete something, the first question I asked myself was, did you do a good enough job? 
It's part of being somewhat of a perfectionist, part of just letting a project go. Because I remember when I was learning about how to complete a book, when I was writing my first book, one of the greatest lessons I learned was that if you're striving for perfection, you'll never achieve completion. So you have to let it go. You have to believe in yourself and know that you were committed. And, but it's a weird thing you go through. Like once something's done, you're like, oh, could I have done it better? Like go through that. But that's why I was super glad to be doing it somewhere other than the city because I'm afraid I'm going to just go back and want to redo something, go back. And I knew that I put my heart into it. I knew that I was in a great environment in a studio to have the best sound for everyone to enjoy me narrating my story. But if you read the life back, you also know it was really emotional. You know, the first half of the book is really a teardown of my entire life, a catastrophic situation that led to something else that led to something else that then took me down the rabbit hole that, you know, burned all the ties and cut all of the ties and eliminated all of the connections with my family back in 2015. So really reliving all of that was mentally exhausting. Like afterwards, Kay and I would go to get something to eat. And by the time I ate, I was just exhausted. It's like six o'clock at night. I'm like, wow, I can't believe how tired I am, but it's an emotional drain and you're putting so much into it. So I let myself, I worked a bit at night, but I let myself get good night's sleep and be like, okay, this is, this is a lot. Then it got easier after getting through that first half and then coming the back end, you know, like the back nine of the greens. It was really how beautifully it unfolded that gave me to gave me that good closure of telling such an detailed and intimate story about my life. And things are emotional where you feel yourself getting choked up, but you know, you have to read. And so I would stop myself and breathe and Seeker didn't have cameras in the room, but he could hear me and I could tell him like, I need a minute or what have you. And so there was all of that just running through me, but now I'm like, okay, it's done. I know you did a good enough job. Do not worry about it. Do not be thinking about it. Put it out there to the universe. Be thankful that you did it. Be glad that you completed it. And now you've done this so much quicker than you did the audiobook for your first book. And now this process is done. So now I can free my mind to potentially start maybe blogging again once in a while, start writing again a little bit and start exercising that tool. But it was an all around great trip. Kay was kind enough to pick me up at the airport. And as soon as we're on the freeway, the first sign I see is Cracker Barrel. And I'm like, you have Cracker Barrel here? So we saved Cracker Barrel till Sunday morning because Cracker Barrel breakfast is like, you're never going to get more butter. You're never going to get a more decadent breakfast. And uh, we, ha we, had, we had so much food, but it was a great, great place. And there was another stop. After we saw the Cracker Barrel when I landed on Thursday, which we didn't go till till Sunday, that evening after we were done, we had a bite to eat, went to the store so I could pick up some things that I needed. And when we were leaving the market, we drove by this place called Juicy Seafood. And I looked at it and it's in a strip mall and I'm like, Juicy Seafood? I don't know. Kay's like, what do you mean? It's the bomb. It is the bomb. So the next night we went to Juicy Seafood. Here are the photos. So every once in a while, you know, I've added a little bit of fish into my life. Every once in a while, I add in different things in my life here and there. And I love crab legs. And so the way this monster bag of food comes out all steamed together with like this bucket at your table for your shells, you can get what you want in with this bag of steamed seafood and seasonings and potatoes and corn on the cob. Kay was right. Juicy seafood rocks. Look it up if you're in the Nashville area, kind of a little bit outside of the city. Um, Hermitage area, I think, is the area. But Juicy Seafood did me right. That night we were so full. I ate all of mine. Kay took some home. I ate all of mine. And that night I was like, I'm watching a movie. I, I can't move. I'm showering and laying in bed. I'm going to bed super early. And so, um, you know, I'm on Amazon. I was thinking about a movie that Kay had brought up. I saw shotgun wedding. How could I have let a JLo movie be out and me have not seen it yet? That's so not my style. I watch everything she does. So I watched it and it was great as all JLo movies are to me. It was a little action thriller. It was a great cast as some would probably say it was so bad. It was good, but I enjoyed it and I fell right asleep after it. And it was ironic because my book opens with a story from New Year's Eve and it was the New Year's Eve where J-Lo had a New Year's Eve special. And my friend and I were watching it 
from the West Coast on the East Coast feed because we could not wait till 9 p.m. to watch it. We had to watch it at 6. And so having the J-Lo story in my mind and then seeing going on Amazon Prime, my iPad would be like, oh my gosh, there's a J-Lo movie I haven't seen yet. Watched it, loved it, amazing. Now I get to be home for eight days. Sunday, I will be hosting at Sapphire 60 in New York City for the big watch party for the Super Bowl. Jaden Cole will be joining me. Brett Rossi will be joining me, both who have also joined me on my podcast. And I can't wait to see them both and just kind of hang, watch the game. A bunch of my friends from the city are coming in. So a lot of good stuff coming up. My next trip, I get to lean into my fantasy sports and gambling folks because it is the FSGA in Vegas. And I love these conferences. This is when I get to see, like many conferences, you get to see the people that you work remotely with, and now you're all in one place at the same time. Steffi Smalls is going to be there, Johnny VTV, great guests from my show on the Better Sports Network. So the next trip is back to Vegas, but I get to be home for eight days. And when I got home, before I came right here to get this episode set so Kay could have it ready to edit, I did all the things I do in my first hour. First hour, did not unpack, took out my computer. I ordered groceries so my delivery could be set up. Then around the time the groceries are coming, I set up my massage appointment because that's very important on the day that I travel. I did have my housekeeper come while I was away, so I walked into a perfectly neat and clean house, uh, which is always exciting, a big little treat. And I got myself settled so I could get my work out of the way. And then once you are complete with me here and I share this conversation that I have with you, I will get to my unpacking with my earbuds in while I listen to today's episode of Pat McAfee, because I cannot wait to hear what McAfee and the boys have to say about Aaron Rodgers winning the trophy, playing golf. This guy just can't stop winning and we love it. I want you to win as well. So guys out there, ultrafarmx.com forward slash Lisa. Ever feel like your performance just doesn't measure up? Does worrying about it make it worse? Let me let you in on a little secret. Many men use Viagra and Cialis not just to treat ED, but to boost their performance and last longer. Whether you're in front of the camera or behind closed doors, every man can use a little help to last longer. It's never been simpler to get what you need. At ultrafarmrx.com, you can get doctor-trusted treatments 100% confidential online from your phone. No awkward doctor visits. No waiting in line at the pharmacy. Discreet and confidential, guaranteed. Better performance is just a few clicks away at ultrafarmrx.com. Now it's time to catch up and have a little conversation with my friend, Jenna Love. Another day, another lovely conversation to share with you. You are going to want to go right to Twitter and follow We Love Jenna Love and on Instagram, We Want Jenna Love. So you guessed it. I am sitting here today with Jenna Love. How are you, Jenna? I'm amazing. Cold, but good. Yes. So we, we spoke briefly before we started to record and you are in Connecticut. So is it colder there than you think it is in the city right now? Maybe a little. Yeah, for sure. it's always colder in Connecticut. It's always colder in Connecticut. Also, I find that like when you're in the city, there's still the warmth from the subway under the ground. People don't realize like the subway does heat the streets. And if you stay between buildings, yes. you don't get that wind. I always say that I'm like, it's gotta be because you're surrounded by buildings. Like when you walk in New York, it's, it doesn't feel as cold. Yep. So Jenna, tell us how you got here. Uh, what did you do before you were in the industry and how you got in the industry? Jeez. I don't know. No, this, it literally just fell in my lap, honestly. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I've been in sex work for a while. You know, I started, it's like a typical, so I started as a stripper when I was 18. Um, I started as a stripper when I was 18 and everything just like progressed from there. I like, I've dabbled in almost every part of sex work that there is. Okay. Um, and about three years ago, I started shooting content and I think just by building your fan base or like having, you know, a certain amount of followers is when companies start like 
Brazzers reached out to me and I was like, me? Like, really? <laughs> and then it was all just, it was from there. And I'm just, I'm just riding this train and happy to be here. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's like proven analytics and insights, right? So before in the industry, before social media, we had to go to every trade show. You had to meet everybody in person. And there was always this pressure, you know, do they know who I am or how do I meet all of these people? And then when you have this numbers game that we live in now, yeah, the proof is in the pudding. You can right. see if somebody actually drives traffic, you can do analytics on their brand and on their name. And I think it's great because it allows performers to live wherever they want to live and not feel that they have to go to every single event because going to those events was expensive. You bought new outfits. You were always going somewhere. You were always spending a ton of money. And now you can be using that money to create content and to build your business. And then people reach out to you. Right. I still feel that way though. I do feel the pressure to show up at places, show face, uh, introduce myself because I am, I am still brand new. And it's good to meet people because I loved, you know, meeting new performers at events because I could see if like, if we had a little bit of chemistry and would I want to work with them, you know, it kind of breaks the ice rather than showing up and just being there. So what was your very first shoot? So my very first paid shoot was Brazzers. Um, so like, I mean, can I say it, it was, it was amazing. It, it exceeded all of my expectations. Um, I was nervous as hell. Of course. Did they did they shoot you in Vegas or in Los Angeles? My first shoot was my I was in Miami. Okay. Yeah. That I makes it super Miami. easy for you on the East Coast. Such yeah. an easy trip. Easy. Um and I did you know what I really, I just lied to you. My first scene was Reality Kings. Oh my god. <laughs> you like, okay, Miami probably was Reality Kings. It was right, it was back to back though. One day was Reality Kings, one day was Brazzers. So I did shoot for Doesn't Re matter. They're all fucking owned by Mind Geek. You know yes. what I mean? They own the whole business now. So like, you know, so yeah. that's just how it goes. Um and and when you were there, because you've been in the industry doing other things, yeah. what was the most different thing for you experience wise that first shoot? Oh, are we giving away important secrets now? Maybe a little bit, right? It's yeah. Like, like the 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 stop and go. The Jenna, I need, f you know, f three minutes of you riding or cutting, uh, two minutes of this, the, the stop and go. And also, I was impressed with my, with the male talent. Like, okay. They're, they're impressive. Um, yeah, because they have to do a lot more than us. Right. Honestly. They really, really do. You know. I don't love the stop and go. And so when I started in the industry, that wasn't a thing other than the fact that we didn't have handheld cameras and everything had to be, if you changed position, we had to walk off of set and they had to relight the whole shoot and move everything around. So it was very, very different. So those were our breaks, but we would normally, they would normally set us up in a room somewhere where we could still be being intimate with each other. Cause there was no Viagra. There was no way for the guy to right. stay up for that long. And when Gonzo first started, I remember walking into my very first set where there was this like printed out thing with all these photos. Okay. So we want her three minutes of this. And I looked, I looked at the director. I was like, oh my God, I'm so offended right now. Like I'm so offended. And he's like, why? I'm like, because I feel like you don't trust my process. Like I know what I'm doing. And also I feel like it's so much more pressure for the guy because you don't ever get into a rhythm. Three minutes is not that long. Yeah. So like you're, you're, you feel like by the third minute, you're starting to warm up, you're getting more comfortable, you're turning around if they need you to turn around. Like, and then like, okay, you can switch because they don't want to overshoot because it's easier for the editors when there's less content for them to actually have to piece together. But it just seems so, I don't know. You know what's just funny? I feel like every film crew is different because that was the Miami film crew. But when I shot for Brazzers in Vegas, Vegas, they were kind of like when it came down. I mean, besides all the like cleaning this mirror and all the bullshit stuff, when it was time for sex, they were like, do your thing. Yep. Like, okay. It really is different. Everybody has a different blueprint, but it's yeah. fascinating because most of the world doesn't really understand these little secrets and how yeah. different companies, you know, have like, if it's a boob movie, they want you to be doing reverse because they want your boobs facing the yeah. camera. Like you kind of knew from what you were shooting of like, okay, this is a butt movie. They're going to want to see my butt a lot. Every position I'm going to, you know, turning around. And, and, you know, another thing is 
with them being shorter, it's not as much, but you still do an hour or so of photos before. So I have to ask you, yeah. were you sore from what I call the posing Pilates? Like sure. you're, you're, you don't realize how sore your body is going to be your first couple shoots because many performers have come to me and said, oh my gosh, I, I'm, my body hurts from yesterday. I'm like, well, yeah, you're in heels. You're holding all these different poses. You're looking over your shoulder and you're doing yeah. things for a period of time that you've never done before. I, I told everybody, I call it the porn flu. I have the porn flu. Like my body's aching. Like I'm just sore. <laughs> what do you do for self-care when you come back for shoots? <sighs> Literally, absolutely. Like just, I'm in home, at home. I don't leave my house. I'm with my dogs. I don't answer emails. I don't answer my phone. Family time. That's great. Yeah. Do you cook? No, I mean, I can cook. I cook when I'm in a relationship. I don't like to cook for myself. Is that okay, what? okay. I just asked that because that's always my thing when I get back from traveling. It's like, I just want to cook all my own food. I'm so sick of eating out. But one of the things I can suggest to you, Jenna, is massages, pedicures, yeah. like all of those things. I always told people I would put my body in the body shop after a shooting or being on the road. And that would mean I was going to get a massage. I was going to get a pedicure. I was going to get And because just wanted to do self-care. And those things go so far. So when it comes to interactions – you started years ago dancing, so you had your one-on-one -on -one personal. Right. What have you noticed differently on social media since you've started to shoot scenes or since you've just become more active on social media? Um, what have I noticed different on social? I guess people recognizing me. <laughs> you know, before you're just, I don't want to say just a dancer, but you know, you're not necessarily like, you know, a name or whatever. Um, so since shooting and shooting with such big companies, like, I'm like honored when people are like, I loved your scenes or I have, this is how you know a true fan, a true fan. One of my friends told me, Jenna, I really loved your makeup. Your makeup was really great in the browser scene. I didn't like it that much in reality Kings. It was good, but not as great. I was like, really? <laughs> <laughs> no. They notice everything. I go through these phases where, you know, it's winter now, so I can straighten my hair because it doesn't get frizzy. And so now that I'm, I've had straight hair for a couple of weeks, I get so many men comment, I really like your hair straight. And it's cute because it's funny to think that men notice those things yeah, because yeah. we do them and we don't know, you know, and, they, and they're constantly commenting. What do you do when you get confronted with trolls on the internet? Uh, I'm going to knock on wood right now because, and I don't know why i don't have many trolls it's the, it's the weirdest i don't know why i try to, I, my whole brand even like when i was stripping and everything i branded myself as like the sweetheart of sex work because i'm just it's just nice i just want to be nice so maybe that has sheltered me a little bit from the trolls i don't know they're one one in few that's fantastic. This yeah. is what I want to hear. This is like so great to know. Wood though, for sure. <laughs> yeah, knock on wood, knock on wood, because somebody always has a weird opinion. But okay. you recently, you getting fat. You know, it's always it's always a weight thing with the guys too. Like, oh, you're you're way heavier than 2015, or then I lose weight, and they're like, "Is Jenna on cocaine?" I'm like, "No, you guys are telling me I was fat. Like, what do you want from me?" <laughs> Yeah, they'll notice that. And also they don't realize that different angles of a fisheye lens, different angles that somebody yeah. shoots you can make your body look very different. Like I know how to pose to make myself look really tall. And so when people meet me in person, they're like, oh my gosh, you're only 5'2". And I'm like, yeah, I'm barely 5'2". It's just I know to put one foot closer to the camera. So yeah. it's going to elongate that leg. And I also have most of the people that shoot me get down on the floor uh, and shoot me up. So that makes me look taller. Like it's just optical illusion. But the weight thing can also look very different when you're shooting photos like that. So when you go on set and somebody shoots you like straight on, you're going to look very different. <laughs> Last night, I had a lovely dinner in the city with Lainey. I know you work with Lainey. And you recently, I saw, were you in town doing Aaliyah Janine's comedy show? I did do Aaliyah Janine. That was so fun. Yes, I did. She is fantastic. Yeah. And it is a really fun show. It's very late at night, though. Mm -hmm. The place was also amazing in a I know. part of New York, like not so busy. It was just overall a great night. Was that your first time getting on stage with a microphone? Yes. Were you nervous? 
hell yes. And, and it's a comedy show. I'm like, do I have to be funny? Because I don't feel like I am. I don't, know I'm I don't know what I'm doing here. I will be fucking shaking. Well, I will say this. The easiest thing to do when you get called on stage with a microphone is just do a QA. and a Let people ask you ridiculous questions because it, and it takes a minute. First, nobody will, nobody will raise their hand. And then once one person breaks the seal, then next thing you know, and, and you can elaborate on these questions and then other people will ask you a follow-up. I love doing those things. And I also love supporting Aaliyah because she's got a great podcast and she's also you know, from our world and so many more of my peers and my colleagues are branching out and yeah. going to their next step of life. And I think the more we see it and the more we celebrate it, it's easier for everyone because this isn't a business you can do forever. Right. So where do you see yourself taking your brand? I know you have years to still shoot because you're young, <laughs> but you mentioned that you might be interested in doing a podcast as well. Yeah, I think so. I So I do have... um. I have a lingerie business now. Oh, let's, let's talk about this. Oh, yeah. It's I Candy Boutique. It's very small. I Candy Boutique. Okay. I Candy, I candy Boutique. Um, it's very small. Um, I have a hard time juggling a lot of things. So, like, Jen, Jenna is the main attraction right now. So, other things tend to fall by the wayside. So, that's in my future. And, yes, I want to do um, a podcast in bed with Jenna. Uh, that's fantastic. Yeah, sort of based like a, like I want to do like a new school Dr. Ruth show. Oh, I love Dr. Ruth. I got to spend yeah. time with her in 2019. Oh. We spoke, we were in a, we were in a debate against each other at the Oxford Union. And since then we've oh. stayed in touch. When I released my new book, I called her. She wrote her phone number down for me on a napkin that night. And I called it finally. I was like, I have to have a reason to call this number. I'd been holding on to it. <laughs> the guy gets the hot girl's number at the bar, right? Should I call? Should I call? <laughs> so when I call it, she answers. It's her landline. She answers and it's her landline. Okay. And so I sent her a copy of my book and she had her assistant read it to her cover to cover. And as soon as he was finished reading it to her, she reached back out to me and she said, can I buy copies for my family? Cause she's in my book, of course. And I, I said, no, you could never buy anything from me. You're Dr. Ruth. Like All I right. would do anything you want from my life. I will give you for free. Just tell me who to sign them to. And she sent me this list of seven people and I was so honored because she was such a huge part of me growing up yes. and she was the first woman to say words that nobody was saying yet. And it was not sexualized in a weird way. And she allowed us to say it is okay to be a little different. And, you know, she really was able to relieve us of the guilt that we felt for not being the same Coming from a small town in Pennsylvania, I just didn't see myself wanting to get married and have kids. All of my friends had already had that mapped out by the time they were 20. Right. And I was like, this just isn't my world. But so back to the lingerie business, it's interesting. I'm meeting more and more stars in the industry today who have side hustles, which I think is fabulous because you have this money that you can make on your platforms. You can put it into a future business and you can also employ other people. So you can bring someone on to help you with this business. What made you decide to start lingerie? And, you know, is it because you love to buy it? How did you decide to start For this? Sure. First, I'm a woman. I love to shop and I love lingerie. So it's like shopping with other people's money is great. And, you know, I, I really started it like I wear even like as a stripper, like stripper outfits, like I wear lingerie every single day. And like, I don't like to wear the same thing over and over again. So I, I first started it like, I'm going to get a wholesale account so I can just get myself stuff cheaper. Smart, smart. And I was like, I'm going to start selling this because like, I love it. And, and I know about it. So it, it was all just an accident, not an accident, but I really just was going to buy it for myself. And also when you're wearing it as much as we have, you know, what's comfortable, what works. You could start to look at things online and be like, oh, you know what? That's not going to be a good fit. That strap isn't really right. So you're able to kind of go in, but it, uh, very smart to you to get a wholesale license and buy it at cost because the shit markup on that stuff is outrageous. Just the stockings we go through every day, you're going through a pair of thigh high stockings. You're not, you're not going to wear them again, you know, because you're getting a tear in them or what have you. If you could buy them cheaper. But now with social media too, like I can't even, I don't even feel comfortable wearing the same outfit twice. Yeah, that's a thing. Something about it, believe me. It's a thing. Now, will you be going to AVN this year? It's my first. 
first year, I am. Huh? This yeah. is very exciting. Are it's, you signing? I'm not signing. Good. You'll get to walk around and meet yeah. people. I want to walk around and meet people. And I think, you know, because the past two years has been virtual, I think it's going to be a little crazy this year. I'm so excited. I'm going for my first time in many, many years, <laughs> uh, almost 10 years. Yeah. So I'm really excited too. And I think for a lot of people, yeah. you know, I'll be signing at Elevated X, which is the company that powers my website. My webmaster reached out to me and Tara Patrick works with him as well. I introduced him to her years ago. He's a wonderful person. And when he asked me, he's like, I know you don't like to do ABN. Da, da, da. And I'm like, you know what, Rob? You've been good to me for so many years. You've been good to every single woman that I've introduced you to. You do good business. You're legit. I should do this for you. And so I'm going to go Young Gravy's performing Thursday night at Sapphire. So I'll be at the event with him. And then he and I are going to walk the red carpet together and just have some fun. Will you be going to the awards show? Absolutely. Okay. So here is when the shopping gets crazy. I would always, okay, so you, you buy a lot of stuff to go to AVM, but I will tell you this, the malls in Vegas, yeah. I could always find a backup dress or two. Like sometimes I would find my AVN dress there because I was like, man, because the variety that they have of gowns and dresses is off the chain. Yeah. I, so I was supposed to go or in my mind, I was going to go to 2019, I think 2019. I decided last minute and then I was on social media and I was looking at these girls and I'm like, these fucking girls, this is like, they're literally like their Emmys. Grammy. Like, yeah. They're Emmys. Yeah. Yeah. We're, like, we're wearing gowns. Yeah. I was like, okay, I can't, I'm not prepared. So I stayed home. I'm like, I thought I was going to buy a dress from Fashion Nova. Wrong. No, no, no. <laughs> you can wear a Fashion Nova dress to walk around during the day and yeah. sign or meet people, but you are not wearing a Fashion Nova dress. I have fucking no words. clue. Like they're going to custom made three yep. thousand dollar gowns. I was like, yes. I'll pick this year. <laughs> Where will you be shopping? Will you do it in Connecticut? Will you come into the city? I've been following a, a few boutiques on Instagram. Yep. So we'll see. I don't know yet. I have no idea. I just, I, I know I want to wear white. That's, that's, oh, that's a risk. I mean, I'm proud of you for wanting to do it. I love white, but I'm always afraid I'm going to spill or somebody's yeah. going to spill on me. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm like the clumsiest person, but I love it so much. I'm going to, I'm going to risk it. So yeah, you'll start tanning. You'll start doing all the things we do to prepare all of that good stuff. So Jenna Love, you are in the industry. You also have a side business. You're working on putting out there a podcast. You already mentioned that you have dogs. I always have to ask, what do you like to do in your free time? Um, you know, so I'm the farmer's daughter. So I go to my parents and I spend time on the farm. Like that's like my my, my cleanse. Yeah. I'm in my cleanse. Yeah. I literally just, when I tell you nothing, nothing, I've partied so much when I was younger. Like I was a stripper. I feel like I've done everything. I don't take me to the farm where I couldn't. Yeah. Ab listen, after being in strip clubs for work, right. the okay. last thing you want to do is even be in a nightclub environment because you know, at all. And it, and it just changes your whole what you want to do. You want to be around nature. You want to connect. You want to relax. You want to read. What do you guys grow on your farm? Oh, we are a pick your own orchard. So it's a lot of nursery stock. Um, and then like pick your own apples, peaches, plums, blueberries. Oh my gosh. I love this so much. I have to visit. <laughs> So I grew up in Pennsylvania and we, we raised all of our own vegetables, some fruits, not as many as you, but all of our own vegetables from corn to peppers to cucumbers to potatoes. I loved being out in the dirt. I loved having fresh vegetables. And I remember when I first moved to California, I couldn't believe how expensive produce was because I never really had to buy it. Same thing. Never had to buy it. Yeah. And you always had so much that you didn't really care if it went bad. But when you start buying cucumbers, they're like a dollar each. You're like, I've got to eat all of these. Like, I cannot waste this. Like, things go bad. You're like, oh, my gosh, I can't just go outside and get more. Right. Herbs, it's spices, everything. True. Yep. Yeah. So that's what you like to do. You like to just unwind with nature. What kind of dogs do you have? I have two rescue pit – I have a mom and a son rescue pit bulls. Oh, that's so sweet. How old were they when you got them? 
So uh, the boy, which was the puppy, um, he was literally eight weeks old. So I was fostering at the time. Um, oh, it's a foster fail is what we call that, right? Mom is. It was ready, <laughs> It was time for me to adopt. So I'm like, oh, yes, I'll take the puppy. They said, can you foster the mom too? Of course. Why wouldn't I? She's still And you, you couldn't let her go. Amazing. And yeah. I'm sure she really helped with the puppy too, right? He is up still, so he's two and a half now. He's okay. obsessed with her, obsessed with her, which is like not good for me. He's like not necessarily obsessed with me. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want our dogs to be obsessed with us, but he could like almost care less about me. He's all about his mom. Oh, that's so sweet, yeah. though. I love that you did that. Yeah, foster fails are real. You bring a dog in, you're going to take care of it for a while. You can't let it go, but. It's so important talking about rescue dogs and also if someone has the space and the time to foster, you don't have to keep the dogs, but if you can just help, you know, you can also, there's a lot of uh, rescues that are looking for volunteers to just help walk the dogs, to just help visit with the dogs. So you have a rescue by you that you work with in Connecticut? I do. I do. Um, and I, actually I was going to, I wanted to start going to work at the rescue. I don't, I emotionally don't think I could do it. It sounds not good, but I no, I completely understand. Hey, you can always do fundraisers for the rescue. You can always go in there and bring in food and things that they may need, but it's an emotional thing and you might end up with too many pets. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you you would never be able to know that one is not going to be here any longer. I'll just take that one as well. I'm trying to get my parents. I told, I told my parents, I'm like, you guys need to sign the farm over to me and I'm opening a freaking rescue. Oh, you could do both of them at the same, and you could probably get people that come to the orchard to pick their own fruits to the dog. <laughs> do your parents have any pets? My mom has dogs. I grew up with dogs, so I'm okay. a dog girl. Yeah, yeah. My mom has a shit ton of dogs. So the average day for you in Connecticut seems so different because, you know, with someone living in, in Las Vegas or in California, they're closer to shooting. When you do shoot now, do you try and put all of your schedule at one time? Like, Worse. you know, and then you'll shoot a bunch at one time. Yeah. I almost feel like, are you, so did you ever live in like Vegas, LA? Like when you were. Well, I lived in LA. I lived in California for 30 years. I just moved back to New York. I moved to New York full time in 2019. Okay. Uh, 2013, I was living both places because that's when I started working for Sirius XM. So I had a little yeah. studio here in New York, which was perfect. And then in 2016, I moved back to LA full time. And I realized how much more I liked living in New York than LA, but I was still in the industry. So at that time, I when I retired, I sat was sitting outside one day and I was like, you know, Lisa, you moved here to get in the business. Yep. Your new business is in New York. Your sports world is in New York. You need to move to New York. Like that's just that simple. And it changed my life because it's a habit doing scenes, being around everybody. It's too yep. easy to go back. And I really wanted to make this, I love the business and everything that it offered me, but I wanted to break this habit. I'm 50 years old now. I, I need to grow my secondary career. I need to know what I'm going to do for the rest of my life. And as long as I'm going back and forth, it's not going to work. And so I found a new freedom here. New York is very different. I can put on casual clothes and a hat and walk around. Nobody bothers you. Everybody's busy. Everybody's trying to get to train, trying to go somewhere. And I love walking. So for me, like the other day, Monday, it was our first coldest day of the year that I'd been home. I had a bunch of errands and I won't do a taxi or anything when I'm running errands. I'll just walk. And so I was walking for three and a half, four hours and it was freezing out, but it felt really good. You know, when you're not a layer, you're comfortable. The cold air feels great on your face, reduces all your inflammation and the people watching, the taking different blocks and seeing different buildings, the history, the hustle and the bustle. It's just it. different. I think I just got burned out from sitting in traffic in LA. Yeah. Um, I love that you said that people in New York are just busy because when people are like, oh, New Yorkers are so rude. I'm like, they're going somewhere. Yes. They're not, they're not rude. I promise you. They're just busy. I but I will it. say this, when I've brought people here and they stay with me and we do different things, yeah. they're always surprised how friendly people are. If you are in an environment where you're having a face-to-face -face with somebody, they'll chat, you know, at, at restaurants or going places. Like they're surprised because I think there is this stigma that everybody in New York is yeah. mean. And then when they come here, like the cops are really friendly. They say yeah. hi, yeah. you know, everywhere where you're walking around, you know, somebody, if you see the cop on horseback, you know, everybody's going to want to take pictures. They pull the horse over for you, let your friends take pictures. <laughs> You know, like it's just different. 
Oh, okay. <laughs> sit down next to a stranger at a park, at the park, and just and drum up conversation. So it's amazing to have so much nature in such a big, you know, city. But like Central Park is like my best friend because that's where you just smell the dirt. As soon as you walk in there, it's just big, beautiful park. And you smell it, you feel it. When you were here in New York doing Aaliyah's show, were you here for a couple days doing PR? Um, that time... No, I was in and out. But, you know, it's it's literally a 90-minute drive for me, so I'm in and out of the city all the time. Well, you better not come in and out of the city without letting me know because we must get together. Will you make it into the city to see the beautiful Christmas tree? I want to. It's like a tra- it's, it's a tradition of mine every year, of course, because who doesn't? I'm going to try really hard. It's so beautiful. I, it's one of the most beautiful places to be yeah. for Christmas. I absolutely love it. But with you, you're preparing yourself to pack your gear for AVN. You'll be going, we're all going out like January 4th or I don't know what day you're going out, but like, you know, you have to start planning your outfits. You have to know all the different things. It's one of those trips My that you are not just so taking. talking about it. What? My palms are sweating talking about it. It's stressful. Yeah, but it's worth it worth it. Yeah. It is stressful though, because you're overthinking everything, but you're going to have a great time and it's going to be a great time for you to cross paths with different performers and to network with different people and, you know, go and thank the people that you've already worked for. And it's also post holiday. So everybody's still like, happy new year. How are you excited about the new year? All of that. What are your future goals for this year? We got 2023 right here. Gosh, we got 2023. Um, my my goals to finish this year. Well, originally they were I I, need, I wanted a couple more scenes under my belt, but you know Miami got thrown under the bus when I was down there last week, so <laughs> that goal's shot. Um, I've got a couple a couple great um content shoots coming out. Okay, that are exciting. So I've got a great one releasing on my OnlyFans this Friday. Um, and you know what I'm doing the rest of the year? Christmas shopping and nothing. Good. That's such a valuable time for us all to decompress. You feel less pressure because you know everybody's out of their office. People aren't going to be emailing you as much. People are also busy. I feel the most relaxed when I know everybody else is busy. Yeah. Just a nice time to unwind, just like kick back. But Jenna, I love getting to know you and I will search for you. We will get together in Vegas, even if it's just for a coffee. Um, And or if you want me to introduce you. What? I'm in Connecticut. I'm your next door neighbor. We are neighbors and you will come into the city. We will make this happen and spend a day walking around aimlessly, doing a little shopping. Everyone's going to give you a follow on Twitter at We Love Jenna and on IG at We Want Jenna. Jenna Love, thanks so much for your time today. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. It's always a great time for me to get together and get to know all of the different people from all the different walks of life, but especially those who have walked my path. It was great to sit down with Jenna Love and you can follow Jenna on Twitter at We Love Jenna Love and on Instagram at We Want Jenna Love. Speaking of Instagram, I thought I would share with you something new I want to do. It's a new segment. This is going to be the very, very, very first week. The segment is called Let's Be Social. Let's be social. Spelled out, let's, the letter B, social. It's kind of like a tie-in, what I'm going to put with a hashtag, hashtag fun follows. So every week, I'm going to share one account that I love following, and I'm hoping that you can join in too. Send me an account that you love to follow, whether it's on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter, and you can send it to asklisaann at gmail.com. This is going to be a great way for us to share, like, what do you like to look at and learn more about each other? So this week, the very first week, I have to introduce to you, this is where Reels kind of comes really in value, right? The algorithms feeding you things that you don't know about, but that are in your wheelhouse. Because I look at so many different animal sanctuaries and I'm watching so many things on nature. This landed in my feed a couple of months ago, and I have so since then shared his account with so many of my friends, and they love it too. The account on Instagram is at Lynn Smith Deer Whisperer. When you go to see Lynn Smith Deer Whisperer, you're going to see a Dallas Cowboys fan. 
who loves nature, you're going to see him feeding deer, lets them come in his house. Like the first video I saw, he was sitting in his hallway with his cup of feed. And by the way, he does have a donation section through Venmo where people can donate a little bit of money to help him continue to buy feed. When you see how many deer there are, you're going to realize this is no small feed situation. This is a big feed situation. He's in his house and there's this hallway with a door and he's holding the feed. This was the first one I saw. He's holding it over his shoulder. Deer slightly opens the door, comes right in the hallway and eats out of the, this is what social media should be. And it ties into the new year's resolution for me of just not feeding into any negativity on social media, not even bantering, not even saying something snarky back. No, just mute or block and move on and make room for the new things that you want to discover, the new people, people doing unique things, travel pages, New York City pages, pop-ups. Like I realize I've really started to follow a lot of cool, different platform sites, people. So I'm giving you one a week on this new segment that I'm calling Let's Be Social. You can hashtag it, fun follows, and you're going to want to follow at Lynn Smith, Dear Whisperer. I just thought this would be a new add-in. I hope you enjoy it. Next up, I want to remind you all about Ticket Rev. I am going to have a guest on this said podcast right here. That's right, the Lisa Ann Experience. I am going to interview the wonderful man who won two tickets to the NFC Championship game of his choice. Oh, it was Divisional Round. I'm sorry, Divisional Round Championship game of his choice. Just so happens he lives in Denver, and I was going to Denver the weekend that he was flying to his game of choice, which was in Buffalo, New York. And it just so happens, small world, I did not pick the winner. Jason Shatsky picked the winner, who I interviewed about a month ago right here on the Lisa Ann Experience. He picked the winner, and it just so happens, this guy's in Denver, just so happens he knows some of my people, Fit Soda, Chris, like all these people, small world, small big world. But I'm going to have him on because he's got a very interesting life. He's also an author, and he had quite a story behind the outcome of him going to Buffalo. It tied him together with family. He ended up getting more tickets so that he could take more people with him to the game. And it was a really awesome exchange of messages we had back and forth. And I thought, you know what? I want to interview him about this and I want to see what it was like for him, his first time buying tickets at Ticket Rev. So you can follow on all social media at Ticket Rev and find out how you can choose your seat, your section, your price. And if there's a ticket available for you, Ticket Rev will make it happen. Go to TicketRev.com and now the app is out so you can download the app to your phone and start seeing what you can see near you. It is time for the mailbag portion of this podcast, which is AskLisaAnn at gmail.com. And I will say today, I already had one question. It came in on IG and I was like, you know what? I should probably use this because I'm going to be in crunch time when I get home. We know how tough it is to go through that mailbag, but believe it or not, the first two emails I checked, and I only checked two because I had this extra question from Instagram, and I realized not to push my luck, but both of them were amazing. Here we go. If you want to be a part of the mailbag, you can send your emails to asklisaann at gmail.com, and I absolutely love it when I get messages like this. It starts with saying, just saying hi in the subject matter. Hello and good morning. Just stopping by to say hello, super fan of your past life. Now I follow your current journey and it seems so nice that you are following a different venue, sending good vibes and success towards you. Thanks for presenting yourself as the great person and genu as genuine as you are. I follow you under a different TikTok username. Thanks again and keep up the good work. Best regards. So I don't know if my friend here means that he's following under his name is different or my name is different, but it's a good time for me to clarify. I am the real Lisa Ann on TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. So if my friend Andreas, who sent this lovely email, is following another account, it's not me. Make sure you are at the real Lisa Ann across the board. All right. Next question, subject matter says, question for the bag, mailbag. Hi, my name is Jeremy. I just started listening to your podcast, two episodes deep, and I'm in 
and finish the life. Wow, what a journey. I was amused by a lot of the drama and impressed by how gracefully you handled so many precarious situations. Being a younger sibling, I was particularly amused by your antics of revenge with your brother on the phone. So I'll give you a little in if you haven't read the life. When I was growing up, we had one landline in the kitchen, like most people in the 70s and 80s did, right? And you had a really long cord. That was the freedom, was the cord. This was before the cordless phone. So very long cord. And you stretch it usually like around a hallway to have privacy because you didn't want, your mom's washing dishes in this little kitchen. The phone's right there on the wall. So my brother would take the phone downstairs to our basement and the crack was good enough for the phone cord to fit under the door. He could completely close the basement door. So I found it no more pleasure in anything in life as a young girl than this. I would hear him get down the steps because we had these wooden steps in our basement that creaked. And I would know when he was down the steps and just like sat on the bottom step because that's as far as the cord would go. And he wanted the ultimate amount of privacy possible. I would tiptoe from my room to the kitchen and hit the receiver and hang up. And then I'd run back to my room and lock the door. So that's a story that Jeremy enjoyed. And I look back to that. I was just a prankster always. I can't wait to hear all about the coming adventures in the life back. I will make sure to order it soon. Anyway, first, I would like to congratulate you on your New Year's resolutions. I tend to prefer calling them life changes because it frames a more permanent context in my mind. That's really good. Life changes is really good because then it doesn't also fade, right? New Year's resolutions fade by March or April. I love that, Jeremy. Thank you for giving me that. I was highly amused about some of the questions you got this past week and impressed by how tactfully you handled them. I am sorry if this is too personal or if you've already answered it in a previous episode, feel free not to answer it. But hearing about your sexual escapades in the business, I couldn't help but wonder if you enjoyed all of it and how it affected your personal sex life. Crossing an item off a laundry list comes to mind. Thank you for your time. Good luck on your travels. The secret of success is to be ready for the opportunity when it comes. Live long and prosper. Lovely email, Jeremy. Thank you so much for that. So it is a great question because I did enjoy all of the sex. There were very few scenes that were awkward or maybe it wasn't a good pairing or maybe somebody wasn't feeling well that day. That does happen. You know, if you've taken allergy medicine or anything that could make you off, this is a very intimate business, not a lot of room for error. But I did things on set that I would never have the courage to do in my real life. I checked everything off the long joy list and You know, when I'm recycling my content on OnlyFans, which is where I use my library from the years of scenes that I own through my company, scenes that I bought back, that's also the real Lisa Ann. So, you know, I interact. I do an hour of direct messages a day, so I get to keep up with my following. I get a lot of sports conversations in there. I enjoy it. I do a live chat once a month on my page, so I enjoy it. But when I'm going back and uploading the content is when I actually really, it soaks in like, wow, you did this wow, you've already done this. Like, wow, this is great. So it made me a lot more confident to try things. I felt like I was in a safe space, people being tested, someone else on set, knowing who your partners were. I could never randomly at this point in my life imagine going out and doing any of those things in a real setting ever again. So I'm glad I did it because I pushed myself. I tried new things. I knew what I liked and what I didn't like. By the time I was 30 years old, I was already really understanding what things I was into. Then I grew and I started to crave different things and I tried them. And there were things I tried that I was like, mm, you know, it's not for me. I'm simple. I didn't like that, you know, but it was allowed, it allowed me to explore my sexuality and feel so complete in that department of my life that it's not something that I'm pining for or that I'm searching out or that I feel I will ever have a lack of because I could just go and upload old content and relive at any day, at any time, my favorite favorite. So Jeremy, that was a great question, a great close to the question and a great word you share about life changes. Last but not least is the one that I grabbed from Instagram out of fear that I would have no good questions this week. This one says, at the release, Anne, you have such full days. Where do you get the energy for all of your activities, events, and stuff? Share the secrets, please. I wrote back at 3-4-Chang. 
That is a great question for my ask, Lisa Ann mailbag for my podcast, and I'm going to add it for you and I'm adding it right here. You know, one of the most important things about being busy, everyone will tell you, is being organized. So that's where you really have to start. And when you're being organized, it's not just about your emails, your paperwork, your meetings, but it's being organized on your wellness. So I know that I'm going to go to bed at a certain time. I now know if I stay up later, like when I do my show on Wednesday nights on the Better Sports Network, I don't get off air till 10. It's kind of hard to unwind usually start to unwind around 11. So I let myself sleep an hour later that day, the next day. I have realized that recovery is just as important as anything else you do. So being mindful about how much I rest allows me to really hammer it out of the park every day when I'm working. I also look ahead. So like the week between Christmas and New Year's, I knew that I was going to be traveling for about the first six, seven weeks of 2023. So I made no plans that week. I stayed in, I reorganized my house. I went through my closets. I went through my bathroom, my products, my stuff. I, I organized everything. I just took time to myself. I enjoyed watching movies. I watched a ton of episodes of, of different TV shows and just caught up on things. I chilled because I was forward looking like, okay, you're going to be going, going, going time to fill the well now sit down with a book, sit down with a movie, relax, make your food, you know, enjoy yourself, see friends at when you can, but take time for you. And that's a great time because between Christmas and New Year, most people are very busy. So I get that calm of like, okay, I'm not blowing anybody or anything off. So really be organized about not just the work you have to do professionally, but the work you have to do for yourself to make sure that you are as healthy as possible eating right, exercising, doing the things that matter to you. I get a massage every day when I land from a trip. Really helps with inflammation, really forces me to drink a ton of extra water, really helps me sleep. So all of those things, but I have very active days, but I make sure I get my eight hours sleep. And so rest is really important, proper nutrition, and always murdering your thirst. So those are my answers. I appreciated the question. I appreciate it all. Don't forget to follow my guests today. Twitter, we want, we love Jenna Love. IG, we want Jenna Love. You can go to ticketrev.com. You can download the app, follow all things at TicketRev. And don't forget about taking care of you, your endurance, and your well-being at ultrafarmrx.com forward slash Lisa. The new segment has been added. It's super fun stuff because let's be social. Let's find something on social media that brings us joy and let's share it with our community because I'm sure we all want to be following these fun pages that are just doing awesome things, keeping us inspired, aware, and just filled with goodness. I thank you so much for listening. You can follow me on social media at The Real Lisa Ann every Friday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, YouTube live premiere at The Real Lisa Ann. I will see you there. I thank you for listening to a new episode of The Lisa Ann Experience.